This is Amateur Logic, episode 190, for February 16th, 2024. Amateur Logic is brought to you by ICOM. Keep your competitive contesting edge with ICOM. I'm George. I'm Tommy. I'm Emil. And I'm Mike. And it's, as usual... Great to be back with you one day. I'm going to just say it's horrible to be here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it just doesn't set the mood. Nope. Um, great. It, is, it is good to be back. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's been warm here the last couple of days. Nice weather. It's going to turn pretty cold tonight. But yeah, it's still February. Go ahead and blame us because we had a... A storm ripped through here last night like you wouldn't believe. I thought it was going to blow the house over. Um, um, it's been kind of s- snowing, I would say, almost nonstop since yesterday morning. And uh, with the wind, it's been drifting up pretty good. Yeah, my co-worker in Columbus, right out, right out of Columbus, Ohio, sent me a little video clip. they got getting a lot of snow right now. Or they were earlier, I'm guessing they still are. Yeah, I, I saw the weather, and it's... A lot of snow up there. The time it gets down here, though, it's just rain and cold. Rain and cold. Tommy, what you got for us tonight? Well, speaking of ham fest, we made a trip to the Jackson Ham Fest this time. We did. Yeah, saw saw a couple friends there. Yep, two or three. Yeah, had a good time. Actually, had a shopping list when I went there, and I actually got. I think I had everything that was on my shopping list. Yeah. Email, what have you got this time around? This time around, um, Glenn over in the chat room and a few of us hams down in the uh, Louisiana Aries organization have some training that we took to talk about. So uh, that's what my segments are going to be about. And other than that, winter field days in the books, right? And I don't know that we can call it same winter but it did rain quite a bit for us down here so uh i did work a bunch of stations at uh from the home qth and besides that mardi gras is in the books as well we had some family in from tennessee and just been enjoying those things and taking advantage of the uh festivities and parties down here but lent's underway now so we gave it all up mike what have you got up on the wall tonight I'm glad you didn't ask me what I have this month because I'm the slacker of the month. <laughs> uh, what's <laughs> behind me here is a, um, I, I can't identify it specifically, but it's a very old, early integrated circuit. Yes, it must be a small one at that. Well, yeah, because it looks like there's not too many connections to it. So whoops, yeah. let me let me move the other way. Um, you know, and, and for you be, to be able to see all the, uh, the various interconnections onto the die, um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, the integration isn't very, very small. So is that a picture you took of something or is that, uh, when you found? No, it just, it just something I found on the internet, just something different. And it caught my eye with all the various, uh. Uh, traces that were expanded out with the copper traces there. Yeah, it, look, um, it looks pretty cool. I don't cool. think I've ever seen that kind of arrangement before. It looks like some kind of hacker flag or something. So, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. Cool. Well, into tonight's emails, we've got... I don't know. This is not an email. It came from one of the local hams in one of the local ham clubs. And it's a very early 1950s um, uh, station went on the air. That image there is of the uh, the official vehicle of the times. I think I don't even know. I'm not too familiar with that particular vehicle, but I think it's circa 1950. Anyway, it was actually uh, very modest. I think it was a uh, only a kilowatt station initially. That's the uh, the fellow that was responsible for that station. There's a picture of the uh, the transmitter there. And on the next one, I had to really look twice because that's a very early picture of Bob Hope, who did the uh, commemorating of that station. 
one on the air. So is, hope. It, is that a push to talk? <laughs> I don't know. It's a button. Uh, I don't know what it does. <laughs> so. Is he Canadian? No, actually, he's he's uh, British originally, and oh. then of course um, he lived most of his life in the U.S. Palm Springs, Florida, or uh, Palm Springs, California, I think is is uh, where he spent a large part of his time. But um, yeah, he's originally uh, from from the well, which is now the U.K. Cool. Wow. Cool. I see Kevin in the house tonight. I got my uh, fire shirt on. Found this in my closet, uh, for my swag closet. I forgot I had it. So yeah. I got to go to fire duty tonight in New Zealand when I get off work here. So <laughs> I'll see you down there a little bit later, Kevin. I guess the one Kevin gave us from. Yeah. Uh, I still got mine. It's in the closet in there. That's Kevin ZL1 KFM. So we'll have to Zed. ask. Kevin, if he's planning any trips to Hamvention, I know he attended one year. Yeah, yeah. It, it happened to be one year that I wasn't there, unfortunately. But yeah, he stopped through here and visited with us. Yeah, yeah. Had a nice visit. Met his family. Mm -hmm. Had a good time. Well, what do you say we go to the Hamfest? Let's go again. We're at the 2024 Capital City Ham Fest in Jackson, Mississippi. Tommy, you, you've made a haul there, it looks like. Yeah, I came out here not empty-handed this time. I got some squirrel-proof rope. Well, not really squirrel-proof rope, but the mastrunt rope, I guess that's how you say it, uh, 330 feet of it. And I got some various and assorted RF adapters that I needed just for kind of hooking up things around the shack there. But that's it so far. Okay. I I have bought one RF adapter, a uh, F connector to BNC, three dollars. I've got to spend a little more before I leave here. Yeah, you got to catch up. I've I've only spent about uh, actually I've spent fifty two dollars and fifty cents so far for all that. That's not bad, and it's it's real rope here. It's yeah. not that stuff from Walmart this time. No, this is the good stuff right here. I, if I was going to go get like what I would consider the best rope, that's probably what I would have ordered. I've got some of this, and I haven't had any problems with them on it. But you haven't had squirrel problems either, have you? Have yeah. Yeah, that's why I put that up there as they chewed up the other one. They finally started eating my ropes. I guess they got full of pecans. There weren't any left. Oh, that, that works. You know, we used to feed ours, and I quit feeding them, and I think they're just looking for something else to snack on now. Ray Novak is around here somewhere. I'm going to try to catch up with him before this thing is over. Yeah, he's in the Aries uh, Forum. I think he was going to the ARRL and next. So I may be gone by the time he comes out. I don't know. I can't stay to the end today, unfortunately. We'll see what else I can find for a few minutes before I get out of here. I may have some more loot, but this is a, this is really what I had on my shopping list. Both of these or these items here. Anything else is a bonus. I wouldn't mind finding a, a decent external speaker. I found some, but they looked like they were in pretty bad shape, so I haven't got those yet. I'm going to make another pass through and see if I can find one. Guess who I ran into? Well, you know who I ran into. Mr. Wilbanks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good to see him. You know, when you come to the half pass, you never know who you're going to run into. And that's a chance. I'm Wilbanks. How you doing, my brother? Doing good, man. How you doing? We're uh, trying to get the band back together here. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's good to see you. It's been a while. You too, yeah. Tommy, behind the camera. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. It's been a couple of days. You're going to, well, I guess you will be at Huntsville. Yeah, for the Young Ham of the Year. Always. Are you there? Dayton? Probably not in the cars. Um, just don't have the budget to do Dayton anymore. Yeah. And plus, we're going up to uh, Dallas in August for my... My niece's wedding, so Good. any money that I would have spent going to date, we're going to go spend there. So, Good. got to spread it around as thin as it is. Busy. Yeah, yeah, selling cars at a uh, GM dealership and doing internet sales. So, sitting around uh, on the phone, on the computer, trying to get people to come in and look at cars. You selling new or you? Oh, both. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's a good car sale. It's a well, I'm not out front in the showroom, which I don't want to be out there. So yeah, I was offered that, and I said no because that's I'd have to work every Saturday. 
and I don't want to do that. You know, Don's days off are Saturday and Sunday. And I told him that it was worth more to have the time with my wife than it would be any money I would make going out there. So, you know, my age, you try to minimize the BS. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm liking it. Um, it's an office job. I'm with about six or seven women in the office, and sometimes it's like a hen house, but it's a lot of fun. I don't have to drive 125 miles a day. That's a big plus. That's a big plus, exactly. You doing any ham radio stuff? Uh, Do you have time? I don't. No, I really don't. I I talk on a repeater more than I get on HF, which is a shame. But uh, I keep looking at the radio saying, you know, I need to turn this on. I know. I know. Mine too. That. 7600 is just, just sitting there and every now and then I'll turn it on and I'll go across the bands and I'll, I'll okay I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do something else now yeah but no time for fun I don't know one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually turn it on and talk I've turned it on did you do winter fielding no Tommy Tommy did something I kind of didn't see that it, I didn't really make any contacts I haven't done field day in forever. We used to do the take my motor home when I was in New Orleans and do all night, you know. Yeah. Camp out in the park with the motor home and that was our base of operation. And that was a long time ago. We still do field day. I wanted to do winter, but I had cataract surgery on my left side just well, Monday before. Right. I was, yeah, I know. I didn't want to out and rest like that. I may have to. Uh, I may have to see about coming up here, participating in one of your field day uh, yeah. wax out of the tent, whatever you do. Yeah, well, the last year we did it from a house, but we got a brick frame tent now. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but there's not a ham station set up there, so it's a bona fide. Oh, there you go. Oh, hey, I, I could be coerced. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could make the. Uh, I could make the sacrifice. Yeah. I think, I think it's this year's only ham only uh, field day we actually had the showers and that yeah. oh, the whole bit. That's, no, that's important. That's that's important. Yeah, it's good. Air, air conditioning and without the screen. To, that's that's roughing it. It's roughing it, brother. That's my kind of field day. Still going with uh, ham nations. We are. I got the hat, so I'm officially still part of the crew. They haven't taken the hat back yet. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, Thanks to Josh at KI6NAZ for taking it over. Ray Novak from ICOM's around here. Oh, yeah. And thanks to him, of course, for sponsoring it and uh, keeping them live every two weeks and doing what we can do. Having the radio news line still going strong? Still going strong. Still have the Young Ham of the Year Award up in Huntsville every year. Huh? Staying busy with that. Not on the radio, but doing radio stuff. That's kind of the life of the radio. It kind of is. It, yeah, it's kind of sad. Too busy to get on the radio to operate to another ham radio. Yep. That's fun. Yeah, give it back somehow. Yep. Well, I'm always glad to see you. You too, brother. Appreciate you. And you too, Tom. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, you too, man. All right. You know, Don just looks like he would play the perfect part riding around in that Crown Vic with that uh, non connected antenna. Yeah, he's on a mission from God. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's black and white. That would be so awesome. It would, yeah. <laughs> I, I think if I had that thing, I'd have to get me one of those hats and some dark glasses. <laughs> I think he said it's white. I don't remember. Yeah, but uh, cool. You know, if you're riding around in a used police car, you need at least one antenna on it. Oh yeah, yeah. At least he's got one. It's a faux antenna. He, when he showed me what he bought, I asked him where the rest of it was, but it, he's got it just to cover up the NMO mount that's up there. Nothing hooked up to it, so we'll yeah, slide on that. Yeah, I think it was, it was 800 megahertz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you don't get anything up to it. So did you spend more than your $3? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So I was, I was the big spender this year. You were. <laughs> Is right. there really anything uh, such as squirrel-proof well, rope? It's, no. They had not got it yet, have they? No, but it's still rolled up on the uh, oh, okay. corner of the table in my yeah. office in there. I didn't I didn't quite catch it. Was it 
was it Daycron line? This uh, Mastrant stuff. It's that Mastrant stuff. Uh, it's, it's really good rope. Real good. They yeah. they have always have a real big presence at the uh, Dayton Hamvention. Um, In fact, I interviewed yeah. the guy a couple times. Mm -hmm. at the... I I swear by uh, Daycron. Um, I have. Uh, Daycron line holding up my dipoles that have been up there, well, 20 years plus. Hmm. Yeah. And the shit sends you a box of squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we we have squirrels. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, they're different, though. They're not vicious yeah. like these. <laughs> well, actually, knock on wood, I'm glad we don't have any around here. Um, the red squirrels seem to be like little devils now they'll, they'll chew through anything yeah um, y'all got yeah. black squirrels up there I've, that's the only place i've ever seen those squirrels are the first black have you seen them yeah yeah we have black yeah. that's mainly what we have around here is yeah. black squirrels and the odd gray one but um i was telling uh talking to a um a co-worker today and there's this place uh, not far from my stomping grounds where I used to spend a lot of summers, um, Exeter, Ontario, more specifically Wasega Beach. But in Exeter, they have albi albino squirrels, and they're they're pure white, and that's that's something to see. Oh, These yes. things running around yeah. in the trees, um, pure Mr. white squirrels. Understood you there at first. I thought you said all vinyl. <laughs> yeah, they don't chew rope like that though. No. Uh, we got a little, <laughs> a little B-roll here from the ham fest that Tommy shot. We'll look at this, and if anybody wants to comment on anything they see, it's short. It's not very long. Yeah. There's one comment right there. Some, yeah. Some graffiti. Wayne KG Five RE. I never did get to talk to him. I walked right by him getting the B-roll. Yeah. And then it, I never saw him again. Did yeah. You, did you talk to him? Yeah, I talked to him two or three times. It was a good crowd, man. Yeah. It was the most people I've seen at a ham fest around here in a long time. Yep. Real nice turnout. Parking lot was that's, full. That's Don. the uh, the flea market yeah. area? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Some nice Mardi Gras shirt Don was wearing there, I saw. Hey, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I was coming. Is that Mardi Gras or is that a test pattern? <laughs> oh, the jacket yeah, yeah. It's different, but his shirt yeah. was Mardi Gras for sure. I, I was eyeing up the, uh, the 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 nice Icom jacket too, and I think I was thinking to myself, where the heck did he score that from? Yeah, yeah, that that really looks like a huge ham fest with that camera. It's a big ham fest, but that camera is making it look huge. Look how far it is down there, all yeah. the way down there. And I was, must have I'm been hoofing about. it to make it all well, the way from like this end that quick. Half a mile, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was wow. that the fisheye? Yeah, it was the 360 camera. <laughs> Everything's fisheye. Like. Wow. Yeah. Still, looks like some decent stuff on those tables, though, man. Yeah. I never did used to talk to Malcolm. Every time I went over here to talk to him, uh, somebody had him tied up. You asked me if I spent any more money. Yes, I did. I renewed my oh, license or again? my uh, AWRL membership. I, I did two years last year, so I didn't, I didn't do it this year. Yeah. But I guess I will next year. You know, I went, yep. I did it for, I had it for a while, and then I didn't. And I guess I, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of keep it going. Yeah. They about the only ones left fighting for us to keep our frequencies and everything. And, you know, there's just a new uh, bill introduced by uh, one of our congressmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. For, against HOAs, or I'd say against, to uh, limit the power of HOAs on practicing oh, for the, Put your antennas? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what was in it. Yeah, Holy you know, smokes. I looked over that. I should have yeah. used that. Tail to, be, uh, that tail should be listed as a d lethal weapon. Is that tails or ears? <laughs> That's tails. Okay. No, nubs. No. <laughs> no, I mean the sound. Oh, that's their ears flapping. Yeah, yeah. they definitely uh, flap when they uh, shake their heads. She's butting her way into the show here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it. Go ahead. 
You can't have, have my hat. No. <laughs> Mike, where's your moose, Mike? Actually, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about... Uh, there's been a number of moose incidents, not in my particular uh, local area, but uh, uh, other parts of uh, the country. There's been uh, some incidents with with moose um, chasing people and and entering towns where they wouldn't normally be, um, and also some some. Well, actually, this one was from Alaska, Alaska that I was looking at. A little brown bear, baby cub was uh was in a residential air, area and just terrorizing the neighborhood <laughs> wow. uh, but um yeah uh, nothing locally here so far yeah hmm. well we're gonna be back in just a moment here because tommy's got something interesting to tell us about but first let's get a message from icom keep your competitive contesting edge with icom ICOM's innovative and high-powered base stations cut through polyps, letting you work the bands and record those contacts. Heard it, worked it, logged it. The ICOM IC7300 is an industry first, using an RF direct sampling system and an entry-level HF radio. This compact, high-performance, innovative transceiver will far exceed your expectations. The real HF fun starts here. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. The ICOM IC7610 is the STR every ham wants. Faint signals are no longer a challenge for contesters or DXers. The high performance RMDR can pick out the faintest of signals even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. This direct sampling software-defined radio has changed the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. RF direct sampling, 110 dB RMDR, independent dual receivers, and dual digicell. Keep your competitive contesting edge with the ICOM IC7851. Contesters and DXers are always looking for that competitive edge to magically pull out the weak signals needed to climb up the list. With faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal, the IC7851 is the pinnacle of HF perfection. 110 RMDR, 1.2 kHz optimum roofing filter, digital IF filters, digital voice recorder, high-resolution spectrum waterfall display, enhanced PC connectivity, and SD memory card slot. For more information about ICOM's amateur radios and to locate a dealer, please visit icomamerica.com slash amateur today for the love of ham radio. Thanks, ICOM, for sponsoring Amateur Logic. I'll second that. Well, tell me, what were you going to tell us about here? Well, it's actually a Facebook post. It's not uh, an email, but it's from our friend Wayne, W1WBL, Wayne from Maine, for those of you that uh, listen to the, uh, the Nets. Anyway, he's posted, I uh, think says, great history here, and it's a link to QRPer.com. Uh, there's a link on there. You know, remember Thomas Witherspoon? He used to be in the... Uh, Facebook group a lot. We've met him. He, this uh, Thomas Weatherspoon. Yeah, he made that uh, those lights. I think Humana light. Yeah, Humana light. See, yeah. we ran into him at the Dayton a few times. But anyway, that's his site. Yeah, this battery's at least five years old, but it hadn't leaked yet. No. Well, that might be the last. It should. Bit. Yeah, it's a copper sure, top. So. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it's uh, about the uh, VOA station. Proper QRO, K4, RLC Tours, the Edward R. Murrow Transmitting Station. So anyway, it's about a tour they had of, they took of the uh, station, the la I guess the last one in uh, North Carolina. It's really interesting. It shows some history about it. Got some cool pictures in there. I uh, saw one thing. It said uh, many of the engineers there are hams, including Macon, WB4, PMQ, the chief engineer, Gary, into AD. Transferred from Greenville when the Voice of America Bethany, Ohio station closed. Uh, the Bethany, Bethany VOA site operated during World War II into Germany and was referred to as Ohio Liars by Hitler. But anyway, we did a show about 10 years ago from there. Well, not mm -hmm. a show, but a special yeah. tour of it. It's got some cool footage of that and uh, interviews and stuff. So uh, I'm going to post a link to the Amateur Logic one. Um, well, not here. 
but it'll be in the show notes for sure this time. But uh, it's a very interesting article, some cool pictures. So go to qrpeer.com and check it out. The link will be in the uh, show notes as well. Okay, cool. Neat. After you left the, the Hamfest the next day, I visited some with Ray. You were there a long time. I was there for, I didn't spend the night there. Oh. Yeah. I came <laughs> home, but, um, yeah, the, w we found an old radio, well, radios, uh, a whole stack of them that I had never seen before. It's pretty rare. And you guys can tell me if you've, if you've ever seen these before. And, of course, it wouldn't be a ham fest without Ray Novak. Ray, it's good to see you at the Jackson Ham Fest this year. Yeah, this one is the first Jackson Ham Fest I've made in over 30 years. Wow. Well, what do you think? Is it um, about the same size as it was 30 years ago? Uh, it's changed a lot. I remember freezing when it was in the uh, cattle barn area. Now it's nice and warm and dry in this uh, climate-controlled building. Yeah, this is a fairly new building, new trademark here too. So it's a it's a good venue. But what hasn't changed? It's just a bunch of hams. Yep. And and all kinds of interesting gadgets. Yep. Probably some of the stuff for sale on these tables was here 30 years ago. Yeah, some of them. In fact, one of them would have been a brand new item here that we've been drooling over. Yeah, uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about this. I, uh, I've i never seen this before. Well, this, this radio actually was a dream of mine before I came on board with ICOM. What we're looking at here is the IC900. It was around for about three years. This was a six-band, multi-band radio. Primarily came out with two meter and 440 with the head unit. So it covered six bands, 10 meter, two meter, 440, 220, 1.2, and then there was a wide band receiver. But what I don't remember, if the wide band receiver unit was with the 901, but or also with the 900. The radio came with an interface box that was fiber optic. The reason why is the data rates between the head unit and the interface unit were so fast. At that time, there wasn't technology that would do it over a, a wired type cable. Along with that, you could configure it any way that you wanted to. As I mentioned earlier, it came 2 meter 440, but you could add the 1.2 gig module, 220 module, you could add the 10 meter, and there's one missing on this one, and I believe it was the 6 meter module for it as well. So this, this allowed you to have multiple bands in your vehicle. Uh, he did have an IC7000 that was right next to it just a few minutes ago. That would have covered pretty much the same things that the 900 does except for 1.2 and 220 but then give you all of HF as well as it being multi-mode. Uh, if I remember correctly, this was just FM uh, communication, so 10 meter repeaters, that's why 10 meters was on there, and uh, your repeaters on 2, 220, 70 centimeter and 1.2. So I guess you're going with separate antennas here because I don't know that I've ever seen a, I don't even know what you would call it, not a duplexer because there's well, there's six radios there. Yeah, um, also back at that time, you really didn't have a whole lot of the multi-band antennas that we do today. So uh, the diagram showed a duplexer in the manual for two meter and 440. So you got your simple dual band antenna, but then you'd be running separate antennas for six and 10 and 220. I have never seen this radio before or these radios. I'm glad you were here and could explain a little bit about it. Well, the, the interesting thing about it, it, it was an expensive radio. The, just for 2 meter 440 back in the late 80s, the product was available from 87 to 89. You're looking at almost $600. And then as a closeout, each of the RF modules were selling out probably 
around 350 bucks. Now, there, there was a lot of fun experimentation that would go on once these started hitting the used market where people would use the different um, RF modules for remote receivers for repeaters or adding a band to a repeater. But it, it, was, it was a dream radio at that point. I was drooling over it. I think you were seeing a, once you got all the options for it, you had side panels, cooling fan, a whole list of accessories to build the stack, you're going to easily spend about four to $5,000. Now, but just, I mean, that's pretty expensive, but just to be fair, dual band radios were a lot more expensive back then than they are today. Oh yeah, definitely. I remember the handheld that I had saved up for. I mean, it, it took me a year and a half to save up for it, and it was six hundred and fifty dollars for a dual band handheld, and that did not include the tone uh, decode board. You had to buy the tone board separate. You know, I saw my first handy talkie over here a few moments ago. That IC twenty four AT. Yeah, there were a lot of those sold out there. Unfortunately for the 900 and then the 901, there weren't a whole lot of them sold because of how expensive they were. And usually they go pretty quick at a ham fest. Comparing it to today's radios, I think there was 20 memory channels per band. So it wasn't like you could have a whole huge scan list of channels for each of the RF modules. I think it might have been 20 per module but you could not link them, you could not do today's complex scanning that you, that you see like in a 7100 or even the 7000 that you have. So this was for somebody really serious? At that price point, I, th I think it took it that way, but it, it, was, a, it was a fun radio at, at its time. Well, well, I'm glad we ran across it. Uh, super multi-bander. Uh, super multi-bander system. system. Ray, I'm really glad you came to the Hamfest here in Jackson this year. You are a Mississippian once again. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. Um, yeah, so, we, you got wheels. Yeah, I'm on wheels, so I'm still mobile. I'm living in the RV, but uh, yeah, the housing market right now, this isn't the right time of the year to buy. Spring, there should be a lot of stuff coming up and find a permanent QTH where... I can look at putting up some type of antenna again. Well, that'll be good because, uh, you know, a guy needs his antennas, and probably down here you can find a neighborhood without a real strict HOA like in other states. Yeah, but they, they still have their we don't want to see ugly things in the air. But we'll, we'll work around that. All right, Ray. Well, great to see you. I guess I'll see you again in, uh, in Dayton. Yes, sir. I'm headed uh, Wednesday to Orlando, so, but I don't think you're going down there this year. No, I'm not. I haven't been to that ham fest yet. I've got to make it one year, though. All right. Well, definitely see you at Dayton, sir, if not before. 7-3. 73, everybody. Any of y'all ever seen that radio before? I never have. It looks pretty My, interesting, though. I do, and... I don't know anybody that owned it, as Roy men or uh, Roy uh, Ray mentioned that uh, it was such a very expensive radio that I didn't know anybody that owned one, but I do remember it. Cousin. And like Ray, like Ray said, it was kind of like the the holy grail of uh, mobile radios at the time. So cousin Jerry didn't have one of those. Cousin Jerry did not. Well, I mean, it sounds like his kind of deal there. It it does, but you know what? It wouldn't be Cousin Jerry with just having one control head. Oh, so you got to have multiple control heads in his vehicle. How, how many has he got? <laughs> I don't know. The last time we drove down to Dayton, he had, let's see, he had a GE Master 2 control head and one, two, three mobile radios. I think he had an FT-206. Is that the HF, the old HF mobile? He had that, and he had wow. uh, a dual bander and something else. So, wow. <laughs> and and of course he had his uh, Whistler scanner as well. Well, I so. yeah, that's uh, what that's a gigahertz receiver there of some type, I think. The Whistler. Yeah, it it covers quite a range. Um, 
I'm not sure exactly how far up it goes, but uh, I know when he bought it, it wasn't comp compliant. <laughs> you know, I wonder what frequency those are, Tommy. You might, you might have the world's ultimate radar detector oh. sitting in your shack. <laughs> it very well may. Yeah, I have to check that out. I didn't notice anybody in the chat room saying they had one of those radios. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty. That was a that was pretty good investment back then. Yeah. Well, you think about when it pretty was good investment right now, and that would have been a a lot of money scaled up to today's uh -huh. cost. But, Ray's right, though. A lot of them ended up being kind of like uh, remote bases for repeaters and such. Mm -hmm. um, they were they were certainly ideal for that. Oh yeah. First first thing that came to my mind when y'all were talking about them uh, are the duplexer and antenna ports was uh, ICOM's uh, disc cones. I have both their oh, okay. seven thousand and their eight thousand, which covers oh. a very broad band today but yeah if i guess it has multiple jacks on each of those modules or the control head or what how did no how each, did see? each module has got its own um it's got basically its each, own each module is, is its yeah. own radio and you've got the okay. kind of the master control head um i'm not sure how you would uh well, i guess you could come up with your own multi-coupled system no, he said they didn't have that back then. You, no. You could get a duplexer. I mean, they weren't building them into radios. Nobody was then. But you can get a VHF, UHF duplexer. Yeah. But the rest of it, it's all uh, discrete antennas. Yeah. Nice. Um, in fact, my two mobile uh, dual band, uh, you need a, a diplexer if you want to use it with a, um, like with a dual band antenna. Because mm -hmm. they have, uh, you know, a separate uh, transmitter uh, receiver jack for each one, a separate uh, SO239 yeah. or or uh, Type N uh, yeah, on the back of the radio. Like so, mm -hmm. where are we? Oh, email. That's me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of of why I said that. You <laughs> have. Uh, you mean this email? Oh, oh, that's no, an email. That's, you said email. <laughs> either. Well, he'll answer to either. <laughs> that's right, because email did get an email, which sparked some memories and some thoughts about something uh, else us hams do. And uh, I'm sure there's lots of uh, so, so, uh, shortwave listeners out there, right? And... Um, there's a for couple. all the go ahead. There's a couple. There's one in yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. You, there you go. So for all of us uh, short wave listeners out there, there is a site that is um, still kicking, still out there, and it's basically a short wave broadcaster with a twist because they use uh, a combination of uh, voice and data to send pictures, text, and uh, almost like a newspaper on the air. Yeah. And if you are if you have you know, programs for receiving on FL Digi, and a lot of people use the Android uh, things that decode these um, messages, you basically get in that um, broadcast several different modes of pictures and data and text and you know like i said almost like a, a digital uh, newspaper over the air so i thought that was neat I, I i got the email and they were changing their schedules you can see here their schedule coming up for i think it's starting next wednesday or it goes from friday through wednesday it's today basically through wednesday um they have a broadcast schedule but look at what they're doing here they have you know, the MFSK modes, 32, MFSK 64, and they switch between these modes um, to give you pictures and the text of the articles. Um, and they publish their schedule as, you know, where they're going to be, when they're going to be, and from which transmitter. So some out of the northeast and also uh, southeast. So uh, I can always get them pretty good here. And the Pictures come through really neat. Uh, they, there's, all, there's all sorts of people who give actual reports, and they have the standard uh, social media sites 
where people will display what they received from them and um, how it came through the Facebook sites. So it's a pretty neat thing out there for shortwave listeners. If you want to decode and go towards the uh, digital side, it's uh, pretty neat stuff. So check it out. Yeah, I actually did a segment on this, and I don't remember if it ran on Amateur Logic or if I ran it in Smoke and Solder on Ham Nation. Uh, but I did a segment on it one time, and it was real interesting, and it worked. You know, every, I received everything I expected to receive. Very interesting. You should check it out. It's got a HF radio and a computer. That's all you need. Shortwave stuff's fun. I've actually been doing a fair amount of that here lately. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the receiver, the, the 8600 oh. receiver. That thing's mm-hmm. awesome, shortwave receiver. I listen to that thing. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's on every day. It's it's on Gnome right now. Yeah. Different things. But, uh, yeah, I've been kind of enjoying that. Hmm. Yep, yep. Cool. There's a cool Twitter account, uh, shortwave. 84 or something oh yeah i, f- I forget the exact uh seven is it 80 or 70 something i know what you're talking about yeah I've but they it. post these little clips i think the guy is in italy or somewhere but he posts uh little uh tweets i guess or tweets or x's whatever you call them these this week but uh little audio clips of things that he found and what it is it's really cool stuff shortwave 78 i know what you're talking 70, about yeah 78 yeah yeah Tw- twix we can call them Twix now. Twix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. That's one of the only uh, few good things on there. The rest there's a of lot of uh, web SDR type radios that are available over the internet that you can listen to too. That are kind of kind of neat if you don't have the real estate for uh, for a shortwave setup at your home. QTH. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I actually listen on my MFJ. Uh, Discom. Glenn in the chat room, KG5CN, and another ham, Russ, WI5ARD, held some training because they needed some more operators who were familiar with sending of forms, the, the forms that our agencies that we serve oh. want to use, and they have been using them. So they put together training and, you know, wanting to build the community of people who could man these uh, stations we have out there. Hello, George, Tommy, Mike, Amateur Logic TV viewers. I've recently been to some training classes hosted by our local (coughs) Aries uh, Louisiana Aries leadership, Glenn, KG5CN, and Russ, WI5ARD, put on some pretty good uh, classes using the facilities from a local American Red Cross. Uh, They really needed some uh, people who are trained in sending messages via the WinLink system and the forms and uh, using the equipment at the various locations in our area here. And uh, they did a really good job. They have very good facilities for training, led by uh, Glenn here, as you can see, KG5CN, helps people, whether it was with installing the softwares or setting up the softwares with people who had various equipment and uh, versions of the software and setups, uh, some portable, some uh, bases, and you name it. Uh, it was a very good uh, get together of people and uh, devices, and just uh, overall getting people familiar with how it works to send these forms, particularly the ICS 213 messages that are used in uh, most of the emergency communications. Um, So it's always good that you have somebody willing to train others and always good to have people who are willing to be trained. Uh, Glenn did a really good job of uh, helping tell people 
what's uh, going on here. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the tactical uses of uh, whether or not we are in an area that's affected by a major storm or our worst case scenario versus us serving someone else uh, who might be in the affected area where we're okay, our infrastructure is okay, but the other side might not be. So that uh, scenarios were also talked about as well. Um, we do have some local uh, simulated emergency tests or sets where we actually man our own EOCs at the city and state levels and as well as uh, parish or as most people call them counties um, and those scenarios come in handy uh, with some of the equipments we have here there's quite a few different pieces of equipment out there there's also training from the ARRL which I was pretty surprised at I was skeptical at first thinking that I might not learn anything because I have been in a lot of uh, industrial settings but I was Pleasantly surprised by the ARRL's EC001, specifically the content. I wasn't expecting what I was, what I read in that. So anybody who's interested in that, you ought to check it out. So shout out to KG5CEN and WI5ARD for what they do. It's always good to have someone train and others willing to be trained so that we can help out if uh, we get in a bad situation. 7-3. You know, Emil, you need to have them just come in and wipe you off the set every <laughs> at the end of every show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're they're thinking about it right behind me right now because I hear them. <laughs> well, okay, well, y'all do a lot of emergency preparedness stuff down there. That's that's good. Much every more year, than we it's do a here. cycle. The hurricanes mm -hmm. are going to come, no whether we're ready or not. So we try, we try. Yeah. So, so that for, that for me, Mel, is that part of ICS two hundred? Two hundred. Um. Well, there's multiple ICS, obviously, trainings, yeah. right? In the forms, there's so many of them. In fact, we talked about more than just the two thirteen. But uh, when you when you go through that, it can be a blur. There's so much to talk about in so many things in those ICS training classes. But when you get down to it, it's the basics. Do I know how to send this form? Do I know how to fill it out? Where's it going? Who's talking to me? And now what am I talking to on the other side? And that's the tactics that we're starting to get people to put together up here where it counts so that when they show up, you got a concept of what you are you know need to do. And that's kind of what Glenn and them are focusing on. And they're doing a good job, in my opinion. Cool. You guys still using the GMRS stuff down there very much? Yeah, you, you, yes. Um, there's a GMRS repeater up on the water tower about 200 feet here, and uh, they take they, they have nets where they take traffic from FRS and GMRS. Okay. We relay, and then we'll pass that to the ham repeaters wherever somebody is. Like Glenn might be at um, his house, but he's on the NWS chat. So is there the, much uh, traffic on it? Normally, when it's not an emergency, ham. it's a lot of hams, actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, we, occasionally, we'll get an FRS traffic or a station or a GMRS only licensed person, but uh, it's mainly hams. I can tell you that. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't have an email. You got an email? But this did come in the mail uh -oh. that I have here. It's pretty close. This this is a, a book I've been reading thanks to the ARRL. It's it's a good one, uh, particularly now that you know we're in cycle twenty five and things are starting to warm up, and you're wondering about the different kind of propagations that are out there. Here to there, radio wave propagations, and there's a paragraph in there that uh, kind of explains what the book's about. You may be concerned that the book is full of complicated equations and obscure parameters. There are a few equations, but mostly just to support the text and figures. What's important is that you understand the general ideas and phenomenon. If you're interested in mostly specific things, feel free to jump around in the book. If you want to dig deeper into the causes and effects of propagation, the equations will help explain how the different elements 
relate to each. Scientific-minded readers may go as far as taking measurements, but the average amateur will be well served just by reading through the text and the figures. There's a, a lot of good information in there. The chapter is basically Fundamentals of Radio Wave Propagation, The Sun and Solar Activity, Sky Wave and Ionospheric Propagation, VHF and UHF Non-Ionospheric Propagation, Propagation Prediction for HF Operation, VHF, UHF Mobile Propagation, Special Propagation Modes and Topics, and Amateur Radio and Ionospheric Science. Very comprehensive book. If you're wondering about the, the different modes of propagation that are out there, this goes into good detail right here. Um, much more than I've I've seen condensed down into to something so digestible before. Doesn't doesn't matter which mode of propagation it is, they've got it covered in here. Geomagnetic storms, a whole chapter here on um you know, how the sun and solar activities affect propagation. You can learn more about how sunspots could benefit you and how uh, other uh, stuff coming off the sun kind of uh, shuts down the bands for a while. Uh, there, You know, Tommy and I, we were talking about, um, what was what was that one? Uh, knife Edge. There's even, a, you know... A section in here describing that and how that works. I, I really never knew that was such a thing, but it works particularly well with dogs. Does it? Yeah, if you they need like to it. propagate them across the internet. They get, they get pretty excited yeah. about that stuff. I'd uh, like to ask one of the dogs what happened at Cycle 24. It was such a bust. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Traveling ionospheric disturbances. Yeah, it, it talks about tropospheric ducting, all the different phenomenon that you might have experienced as a ham or you are yet to experience or you hear somebody talk about a particular mode of propagation. Right here. It's not very thick. It's, uh, yeah, you know. But it's still, it's still fairly it's just, uh, substantial. It's I mean, pretty comprehensive. There's, there's a lot of Let stuff in there. Let me see, George, put it back up again. It's, it's about here to there. Yeah, it's about... <laughs> yes, it's uh, about. No, look. It's about here yeah, to there. It's about here to oh, there. Oh, yes. <laughs> here to there. Okay. Actually, but it's it, it's thinner than that. So. You're going to be here all week? Yeah. <laughs> all that's, week, that's, a, that's when you compress the file, though. It all depends on your perspective. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So yeah. If you can't find this later, it'll show back up one day. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah um some good tools in there oh there's also a section there talking about uh, <coughs> solar eclipses which could be handy very soon you just blew mike out of the water there <laughs> i'm not sure what happened <laughs> um yeah hey, we've got an eclipse coming up so it'd be a good time uh, to maybe bone up on some of that knowledge hmm I'm not sure what I'm going to try this time around. stuff in here? EME stuff? Oh, yeah. There's everything. That's pretty much a full show there. Why don't we go around the horn, see if there's anything we left out, any ideas anybody's got that we can actually talk about on the air, <laughs> you know, uh, or anything. Tommy? Uh, not too much. Uh, it was pretty interesting. The The Hamfest stuff was, was fun, and... Uh, Emil's segment, I like that. That's pretty cool. They, they do some pretty interesting uh, MCOM stuff down there. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of, I don't know. They may do that stuff around here, but I just don't know of it. They, they do some digital nets on one of the repeaters here, where they get on there and practice um, sending some different digital modes. Do they? Now I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's to the Cajun Navy level. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like it is down there, but uh, you know, there are people working on MCOMs around here and experimenting with different yeah. modes. You look but, into some of that, it's pretty those, cool stuff. Those guys are serious down there, Emil. <laughs> yep, 
They are. Uh, there's uh, lots of um, interest because we know <laughs> we know it's coming. It's uh, you know they tell us every fifty years or so you're going to have that big one, but there's ones in between that'll cause uh-huh. just as much yeah. fun in in local areas and that whole tactical thing where you swip swap flip flop mm-hmm. is really it it highlights that winlink network abilities yeah with so many different modes all the bands and uh people who just volunteer their stations set them up automated via all those different protocols so it's really neat so, when you start see how to use that so is there any crossover into our state over here absolutely in fact we um you know our our digipeter on vhf only covers 70 miles and that's um vhf right so if you are in the affected area you need to go out 300 to 1200 miles out to leave these messages on a backbone and the other station who's 80 miles away from you like our state capital they do the same thing they hit a station out so imagine mm-hmm. that in our case we're all in the affected area because something major hit us like katrina and we both can communicate with each other both going out 300 to 1200 miles out because the vhf is can't we can't hit point to point and hf we're probably shooting right over their head you guys know if yep. you if your invis is not working or something else is wrong you still can hit those stations, and there's so many stations volunteering their services via HF, VHF, UHF, all different protocols, all different methods. It's hard not to hit something on that network. That's why I like it so much. Oh, yeah. Back when Katrina hit, there there wasn't really that much digital going on at that point. Uh, That's right. You know, yeah, so this is all new. Started. There was a lot of chaos from what I understand and what I remember. Yep. yep. And and the people who are here in our area who have those same they call them tri mode RMS gateways on HF. Um they are the volunteers for somebody else like uh Marty's in the chat room. Maybe Ohio had a tornado and they have to reach out something wiped out their communications. Well, we're here for them. They're here for us. It just depends on what area is affected and who's hitting who. Yeah. You know. So we, we, we help each other out. What have you got that you can mention? Well, there is going to, there's not, I mean, there may be some propagation, but there's going to be some prognostication there will coming be. up at the end of the month. Uh, that will be Ham College in, wow. I hope it's going to be on the 1st. It's going to be on March the 1st. Hmm. Good, because I won't be here until the 1st. I don't know what we're studying yet. But it'll be something. It'll be something on the amateur extra exam. Pop quiz on this book. Yeah. We, we have talked about a lot of things that are in that book um, it, during the last few months on Ham College. Yeah. Yep. If I'd had that book, I would have known what I was talking about a little, <laughs> a little better. But, uh, anyway. Wouldn't have been a buzzer moment. Yep. Uh, speaking of procrastination... Yes, how are you the, coming the on your Bidex, project? BitX40 project's coming along, slow but sure. And, uh, of course, Marty, I'm losing. You're winning, I think, unless you're going to surprise me. So i um, been working on that a little bit. Um, I, I have this email from, from a ham uh, regarding the BitX40, but I think, I think we'll save that for next month. Um, other than that, I haven't had a lot of time getting really busy at work, so not a lot of free time to, mm-hmm. to do stuff. I did have a quick look at something kind of exciting, and that's the uh, SDR Connect software uh, from SDR Play. Yeah. Um, and for the first time, I booted up my Raspberry Pi, and um, yeah, I think you need a Raspberry Pi for that kind of thing. I've got it hooked up to my RSP1A. And uh, it does get quite warm. I don't have the uh, the optional cooler, but uh, it could use a fan on it. That's for sure. After you've been running it for about an hour. Oh, the yeah. pie it gets pretty yeah. hot. You mean? Yeah. Well, Mike, if that is a hex inverter behind you there, you may have just won the contest <laughs> with Marty. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> unless or unless lost, an op- unless built. an output is connected to an input. You're true. Yeah. <laughs> 
It could Nick? be like you said. It's a hex inverter. There's six of them. So yeah. Wait, you you have to clarify something for me, Mike. Was that a RSP one or a RSP one A? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canadian edition. Yeah. Um, R RSP one Alpha. Okay. Okay. I got Not it, Echo yeah. Hotel. I okay. think all of us own a version of. I've got those it too. Now. I got a duo. They're they're incredible. I uh, use mine all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I use it for work too. Oh, got it. Yeah. I use that receiver mostly. Yep. Yep, it's that's the one I got. It's the R play, eh? Yep. Yours isn't a duo. Yours is an Uno. You got an RSB yeah. Uno now, don't you? Actually, oh, yeah, that is true. I uh, accidentally did not use the protection on one of the inputs, and in, oops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so you got a half of a RSP duo. <laughs> yeah. It's a Uno. It is a Uno now. Email, any final thoughts from you down there tonight? Well, you know, I think I heard you mention that March 1st, they yep. doing something. I'll, I'll be uh, over in uh, Houston's Ham Fest with my pops that y'all met at Huntsville. Yeah. And, and uh, we're going to go over there and see their uh, space center in Houston as well as their uh, Ham Fest while he visits uh, his brother. So that's what I'll be doing. Oh, well, sounds cool. like a good time. Yeah, I've, I did nice. a field day one year with those guys over there. I remember that. Yeah. I forgot about that. My son lives very close to there. Yeah. So. Cool. February the 27th will be the next Logic Net. You can uh, join us at all those places there. I know Professor Thomas will be calling the net, and uh, hopefully Dean I'm, I'm signed up to be, so I may he, have to do it from the hotel. Dean's on tour, so I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hopefully I can work it out. I mean, you've seen the shots before of Dean in the hotel, so we don't know if he'll even be able <laughs> well, to get to the radio. they don't have a hot tub at this one, so. Oh. Something I've been wanting to say for a long time that's been on my notes here, my cheat notes, but we never talk about it. It's been on here for a long, long time. Just a reminder, please click the share button, spread the word about Amateur Logic, and uh, yeah, click the like button on there too. It helps us, and you know, we'd like to, yeah, we'd like we, to have folks watching. Appreciate the likes. Seven three. Seven three, everybody. Seven three. Seven, three. 